glad y'all made it in today. I was worried there for a few minutes. There was like six people in here when we started. <laughs> I'm glad y'all made it in. Better late than never is what I always say. So I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here for this message series, Freeway. My name's Michael, in case you don't know me. I'm one of the pastors here. We're glad you're here for this series. We are about five or six messages in on this series already, and we got like one more to go on it. But, but you know... Um, if you haven't listened to any of these or if you've missed some of these, these are kind of steps towards freedom in your lives. That's exactly what each one of these messages are. So um, if you'd like to get online and listen to the ones you missed, please do so. Please do so because this is essential. We did this at the beginning of the year for a reason because we want this to be the theme that we kick off this year, that we live free. As children of, children of God and saved by Christ, we are free, and we're going to live the free way. And that's what this is all about. So get online, listen to the messages you missed. If you'd like one of these connections, how many people are in connection groups here doing the freeway connection groups? Okay, that's awesome. And it's a great, it's great, isn't it? The work you're doing in these connection groups leads you through all these things. And so if you want one of those connection group books, they're 10 bucks a piece. That's at cost. I got, I got them for 10, and I got to pay the guy back. So Give, give me 10 bucks, I'll give you one of these books. They're a great thing. So work through this, even if you're not in a group, but do it with somebody else. It's better that way. Um, so this whole thing has been to, to date about this sense of internal freedom. We're all working, we're working on the internal stuff. We're working on the things that are at a soul level. You know, the unforgiveness, the, 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 the things that we trap ourselves with, that we're imprisoned by, the stuff that we, all our lives has identified us and, and we've drawn our identity from, even if it's a really bad identity, you know? We're working on breaking all those walls down and getting free from that kind of junk because that junk should no longer dictate how we live once we're saved by Christ. Once Jesus has broke the chains, we got to walk away from them. Don't pick them back up again. We've been saved to be free. And here's the thing is that, that as you get free on the inside, your world around you is going to start to change. And you might have thought your whole life, I could never change the world. The world, you might have given up on it, you know. I could never change the world. I could never make any difference. Here's what I got to tell you. You get free, you get really free on the inside, you can't help but change the world around you. It will change around you just by the very nature of your freedom being expressed in the way you live. And that's, this, this whole series is about finding freedom. And what happens is if, as you deal with all these things, all these things that define you for good or ill, as a young person, as a child, and, and on into your adult years, as, as you deal with each one of these things and allow God to work on you on them, and to heal them, to redeem them, to do all these things. As you deal with that, you get this greater and greater sense of freedom because those walls do get broke down. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to get this freedom, and you're going to start to experience it on a soul level, and you're going to get out in the world, and you're going to witness something that, that until you're really free, you never really see it. You're going to see not only are there barriers on the inside of people, but we put artificial barriers up out in the world that keep us from each other, that separate out, that cause us to judge one another, that keep us separate from other people. We, 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 we call it all kinds of things. We use religion to do it. That's the saddest of all. Our nationality, our gender, all these things keep us separate from the other, and it makes that person the other instead of just another child of God built in the image of God that I can, I can love and be with and relate to on a, on a human level. We've got all these artificial constructs in our world that we buy into. And when you're free, <laughs> you notice they're there, but they don't mean anything to you now. That doesn't stop you anymore because you got free on the inside. The stuff on the outside doesn't matter as much, and it won't slow you down because you're here to help express that freedom to them and to show them how to get free. Paul said it this way. He said, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then again and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Don't get tied down by this word. Once you're free, you're free. You don't have to be defined by the things of this world anymore. You don't have to be defined by your past or what your present circumstances are. You are free. You're being freed to express this freedom. Jesus Christ did not free you so that you could live the rest of your life like a slave. He did not free you. To live like a slave. It's for freedom. You've been set free. And that works its way out into the world. So what does this mean? What is this concept freedom? Because we, we dance around this all the time. 
what does it really mean? So define freedom. You know, because if I'm free, that means I get to do whatever I want, right? That's kind of, it's, it's kind of like, a, you know, a teenage view of freedom. Sorry, teenagers, but you'll, you'll learn as you get, a li- when you have to buy toilet paper the first time, you realize how unfree you actually are. But it, you, you'll learn, and, and, you know, in some senses, it's like, you know, when I turn 18 and I move out of the house or I go to college, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. That's not freedom at all, you know? That just means you're out of the direct control of your parents, that doesn't make you free at all. And so we get this notion of freedom. So if I've been set free, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. Nobody gets to judge me. Nobody gets to hate on me. God's going to love me no matter what. And, and this has been an argument from the beginning of the church. Don't think this is like an age, you know, this is an age-old argument. And they were like, okay, so we're free, so I don't have to pay any attention to anything in the world. All these barriers you're talking about that don't stand in my way. Anymore, I, no, you have to pay attention to them. Paul said, slow down just a second. There's a couple stipulations to your freedom. You are free, but I I want you to hear this. And he said this in in Corinthians. He said, you say, I'm allowed to do anything, because he's been preaching freedom to these people, right? But not everything's good for you. That's the first stipulation. You're free. Don't get bound again. Don't engage in behavior that's going to trap you all over again. Don't get back into debt. Don't do, don't do things to self-medicate. Don't, don't get into relationships that are bad for you. You are free. Be free. Don't, don't chain yourself down again. So your freedom's only as good as you maintain it. Only good for as long as you maintain it. So that's the first stipulation. The second thing is, he says is, you say, I'm allowed to do anything. It sounds the same thing. But not everything's beneficial. And what he means by beneficial, it sounds like the same thing, but it's not. Beneficial is an outworking of good. It's good working itself out in the world around you. You say I'm free, and if you, and you know a lot of people, well, I'm free, you don't get to judge me, I get to do whatever I want. But if your freedom impinges on another person's freedom, or your freedom traps another person, or your freedom is at the expense of another individual, it's not really freedom, is it? That's two stipulations. Your, your freedom means you've got to maintain it, on the inside, and then you got to promote it outwardly. And so if you're free, if you think your freedom just means I'm free, I get to do whatever I want, that's, that's just selfishness is what that is. That's self-centeredness. Because here's the truth. Free people free people. That's what we engage in when we get free. We free others. Free people free other people. That's what we're here for. That's what your freedom was granted for. That's why God said, I'm not judging you anymore. I'm welcoming you and I'm accepting you. I'm renewing you. I'm redeeming all the bad things that happened in your life. I'm forgiving you so that you can go free others. I'm freeing you to free others. So don't lose it, number one, and learn how to promote it, number two. And Jesus was all about this. In fact, he gave us, before he left his disciples, he gave us our freedom manifesto, our our marching orders, our mission. This is what, I mean, he he had died, which everybody thought, well, it's over then, right, when he died, everybody in his life, and then he got the ultimate freedom, he beat death, and these people saw him risen again. They saw him. They witnessed him. They touched him. They talked with him. They ate with him. And every last one of his disciples that saw him risen went to their deaths proclaiming that Jesus was Lord. So they all knew. But the last thing he said before he left them, and this is probably one of the most important things, were his marching orders, were his freedom manifesto. He said, he said I got to go now. But here's what I want you to know. He says, I have give, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Get that. It's not just in heaven. It's not one day when you die, Jesus will be there waiting, being king of all. It's right here, right now, in your life, right now. I've been given authority over that. Therefore, because of that, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I've given you, and be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. This was the mission that he was handing off to his followers. Us, us, right here. Not the church, not some organization, us. That you and me have this mission. As a church, we took this mission and we said, Crosswinds Church exists to move people towards real life, real people, and real faith through a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Basically, it's this. 
This is it. This is what we as an organization of Christians with this mission statement exist to do. This is it. Our inward freedom has to work itself out into the world. Free people, free people. And so if we're going to figure out how to make this happen, how to do this, how to use our freedom to the best way possible, we need to understand this statement. There's a few things about it that we have to get right in order for that to work. Because you've been freed, now it has to work itself out. And the first thing is this. Freedom is placing everything. Pastor Suzanne always says, what does everything mean? Everything. Everything. Everything under God's power. See, we're like, we'll place this or that or that. Or if we're having trouble with this area, we'll place it under God's power. It's everything. Jesus said all authority. I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. The problem is we're still holding on to our authority on a lot of things, aren't we? We hold on to it. Have you given authority to every area of your life to God? I know I, ha- I struggle with this all the time. I'll give it all to him. And I go, well, I got this area, God, right? And I'll go work on it. And I, le- I know better. I know better because I lived the first 31 years of my life doing that with every area. And I messed every last one of them up. All authority, your work, your dreams, your plans, where you live, who you relate to, who you're going to marry, Your job, your money, your finances, your health, everything should be under God's authority. And we're not going to find real freedom until we place everything under God's power. And how does that work? Because it sounds like, really, I'm just trapped again if I do that, right? I have to give God authority over every year of my life, so therefore I'm not free, am I? Let me show you how it works. When I have charge of my life, When I have authority over every area of my life, I am always, always, always going to be limited by what I think is possible. I have a horizon out there that I think I can achieve. I might sneak past it a little bit here and there. I might take a chance here or there and get a little farther than I thought I could get. But I always have a limitation that I think I can do with what I've been given, right? And with God, all things are possible. Everything out there is wide open. God blows that horizon away. God says, you have no concept of how free I've made you. You have no idea where I'm going to take you. But I can't take you there until you give me authority over every area of your life. You'll always be limited by what you think is possible. And I can tell you for a fact, I never, 10, 15 years ago, not in a million years would I think I've been doing what I'm doing right now or have done or have accomplished anything, anything in this world much less what we've been able to accomplish. And it only happened because I was willing to place authority in God's power. I can't imagine what will happen if I place every bit of my life under God's authority, if I could get used to it and just let it go and quit taking charge myself. God will blow your possibilities away. He He will take you to places you never thought you could get on your own, but you have to place every area under His So that's our next step. Look at the connection card real quick. Pull that out. We're doing the next steps in the middle of the message right now. Because if we don't get this right, none of the other stuff can happen. So let's look at that. Look at the third one down. It says, this week, I will write down what it means to live under God's authority in every area of my life. That means I'm going to write down every area of my life that I can possibly imagine. My health, my relationships, my marriage, my kids my finances, my job, where I'm going to live, what I'm going to learn in school, how I'm going to, my friends I hang out with, every area of my life should be under the authority of God. And I'm going to imagine with prayer what that would look like if that actually happened. If I did that, what would it look like if I did? And just imagine, use your imagination. God gave you a good brain. Use it. Use it on this. It says, in order to experience freedom, I will pick one, and I said one of those areas, and live fully into it for the next six months. Because here's what I know. Why only one? I want you to focus. I don't care if it's your finances 
or your job or your relationship with your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or anything like that. I don't care what area you pick. Pick one and you make it your mission to give that to God every day. Every day I'm going to try to live in this. I'm going to try to be responsive to where God's leading me in this. I'm going to search the scriptures and try to figure out how I should be dealing with this situation. And I'm going to make it my job to give authority of that area over to God. Because here's what I know. You're going to start realizing just how free you are in that area and exactly where God wants to take you, and you will willingly give him the rest. You will give him every other area when you figure out what he does with that one. So yeah, just focus on the one. You'll release the rest. Trust me on this. Now you might try to grab him back, but you got to let him go again. Freedom is placing everything under God's power and allowing God to use every bit of you the way he intends. Because what he's going to do, man, we have no, no eye has seen and no ear has heard what God has planned for those who love him and are called according to his purpose, right? No eye has seen and no ear has heard. And the next thing, and this is, <laughs> this is one, we have to have this first. You've got it. If you don't, first thing is get free. Get free on the inside. Allow yourself to be forgiven, forgive others, experience all that pain. Get past all that so that you can be a blank slate and then start placing everything meticulously under God's power. And then you've got to do this next thing because freedom really is engaging in Jesus' plan. Engaging in Jesus' plan. And you cannot do this. Listen to me. You cannot do this. Unless you do the first thing. You can't do it to the full unless you've placed all of you under God's authority. This next one really doesn't work like it should. Until you've done that, it's hard to do this. Jesus said this. He said, go and make all disciples. Because you've placed everything under my authority, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. You know what he's saying? In order for freedom to exist and to, to spread in this world, you have to replicate yourself. You have to make other yous. You have to teach other people to follow Jesus the way you know how to follow Jesus. You have to. If you don't, see, here's the thing. You can get saved by God. You can go do some amazing things this world. You can build storm shelters and plant churches. And we can do all the things that this church is engaged in. You can feed the hungry. You can send snacks home for the kids on weekends. You can do all these great things for Jesus. But if you die and you haven't replicated yourself, it ended with you. It stopped with you. It can't go any further because all that good work just ends with you. And yeah, you know what? That storm shelter will still be there, but they'll forget why it was there. They'll forget. There'll be no one, no one left to carry that on. It ended with you if you don't replicate yourself. And, you know, a lot of us, we just want to put that on the church's shoulders. Like, oh, that's your job. You get paid to do that. Disciple people, right? I can't. You guys show up one week, one hour for one week. For the whole year, that's 52 hours. And don't tell me you jokers show up every week. I know, we take attendance, right? I know, I got 52 hours max if you show up every week. Maybe more if you serve or do something like that, right? That's it. That's all the exposure me or Pastor Suzanne or Pastor Stephen have with you. That is it. I cannot disciple someone in 52 hours a week. It just doesn't work that way. All I can do is encourage you to go disciple yourselves. You're smart. You have resources. You have all these things at your fingertips to learn how to follow Jesus. All we can do is encourage you. Get together. Encourage each other. Catch hold of the vision that God's given to us as a church and try to live that out the best we can. But if we fail at this, if we fail at replicating ourselves, we are done when we're done. That's it. It doesn't go any further. We're done. This church will stop. And all that investment, all that thing, all that you put into this, every sacrifice that you put into this was for naught. It was for nothing. We have to replicate ourselves. Or this freedom doesn't spread. And I don't have exposure to your friends, to the people you have influence in your lives. I don't have, I have only 52 hours a week, a year with you. I have no way to have that kind of exposure to your friends to help them learn what it means to follow Jesus. And I know darn well 
darn well that some of you cannot say the word Jesus where you work, where you actually have influence over people, or where you go to school that, you know, I, you, you'll either get fired or chastised by your friends or whatever. You don't have to start with Jesus. You don't have to lead Jesus first. Teach them how to follow Jesus. What's all the stuff that we teach you? How to have grace for people, how to sacrifice for people, how to be there for people when they're down, how to not judge them when they've failed, but help them pick themselves back up, right? How to forgive. All these things that we teach you guys, you can teach other people that you have direct influence on. You can teach your friends. You can teach your teachers. You can teach your bosses. You can teach your fellow employees how to follow Jesus. And you know what? As they learn these concepts of all the commands that Jesus gave us, as they learn to live those out, they'll start to be free, and they will get curious and come asking why. Then you can say, because of Jesus. Because Jesus. That's why. They'll, come, they'll get curious. They'll come and want to know why, are you, you know, why are you so good to me? Why are you teaching me all these good things about how to live and how to interact in the world in a way that makes a difference? What is that? Jesus. Then you get to say Jesus when they ask. So you don't have to go about this in any certain order. You don't have to go say, believe, repent, or go to hell, and then turn them into a disciple. You can turn them into a disciple and then have God save them. But it ends with us if we don't do it. I don't have access to your friends. You do. This wasn't for pastors. This was for every disciple to do. All of us. So who do you have influence with right now? Is it a boss? Is it a fellow employee? Is it someone who works for you? Is it a fellow student? A teacher? A coach? Who do you have influence on? A friend? A little brother or sister? Your children? How are you replicating yourself? And here's the thing. If you don't do the first thing, if you don't place everything under God's authority first, what kind of disciples are you going to make? Are they going to be half-hearted and lukewarm because you were half-hearted and lukewarm? Because I can guarantee you the disciples you make will look a lot like you. They cannot, they can't buy in until you sell out. They can't fully buy in until you and me, until we sell out. And when we sell out, man, watch out. Freedom will spread. It'll spread. And then there's this, this last thing. And to me, this is probably one of the most ignored parts of our, of our relationship with God. And that's that, that freedom is living in the Spirit's presence. Jesus said it this way. He said, be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. If we don't get this right, if we don't get this part right, all the rest of it will eventually fall apart. It will. How many people, when, when you've had, you don't have to raise your hands or anything. I know it's kind of embarrassing to go up. But have you ever had like a really kind of awesome God moment where the spirit was so close to you, you could feel it, and you listen to a song lyric and you burst into tears for no good reason, and you embarrass yourself and all that, you know? That's the Holy Spirit softening up your heart, right, working on you. Or you feel God say, I need you to pray for this person right now, or I need you to go do this thing. I need you to give right now to support this. You feel the spirit kind of, and you're like, wow, that's awesome. God's real, right? That's awesome. See, you know, until God is real to us, God is just an idea. And the people that we're trying to turn into disciples, God is just an idea to them, if, if even a good idea, right? God's just an idea. And until God is real to us, God will never be real to them. They'll just think it's a great idea that we're living our lives this way. Good on you. Have a great time following Jesus. I hope that makes a difference for you. That's what they're going to think, right? Have fun with your Christian self-help program, right? That's what they're going to think about this until God becomes real to us. We have to learn to listen to the voice of the Spirit. That's going to be the rest of your life, learning to listen to that voice. Because here's what happens. We get all excited. We feel the Spirit. The Spirit moves us. We run off and go do something. It was great. We run off, go do that. And before long, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and you can't hear the Spirit anymore. You been there? You feel me on that one? Been to where you can't feel God anymore? That's horrible. 
Because once you've tasted and seen, you want that again and again and again, right? It's like crack cocaine, man, getting in the presence of God. That's awesome. It is. It's like glory. It's like, wow, I mean, I never experienced that kind of fulfillment in my life unless I'm in the, in the presence of God. And when that's gone, it's noticeable. And what happens a lot of times is we just run past the voice of God. Because we're so excited, and God says, you know what? I'm going to wait here until you get tired. You can come on back when you're tired and learn to listen to me, because this is going to be about you being re- responsive to my voice. If you want to place everything under my authority, and you want to engage in my plan, then you better listen to my voice. And if you don't, you're going to get lost out there. And so that silence is a reminder to back up and go listen. Open up your ears, get ears to hear and eyes to see. Because you do not want to be out there alone without the Spirit. Now Jesus says, I've never really left you, but we quit listening because we're running so fast. The wind's whistling past our ears and we can't hear a word he's saying, right? That's what happens. You know, it's so hard for us to truly live full full on into our faith and into our new identity as as children of God unless we have the spirit whispering into our life and and pulling us forward. Uh, I have a, Suzanne and I made a friend of somebody here recently within the last few weeks and we went out to lunch with them to kind of figure out what their story was. And this person's a young person in their 30s, in their early 30s and um, they're on rock bottom right now. There's just no easy way to put it and it's of their own doing. They ended up there just, they have no friends, they have no family left that they can turn to, they have no finances, they have no belongings, they have nothing. And you don't know what it's like to be on your own until you have nothing. And it wasn't until they got to that point that they thought, hey, maybe I need to work on this relationship with God thing. Now here's what happened. That person had every opportunity in the world. They were raised by good parents, successful by anyone's account. They went to good school. They graduated with honors. They got a scholarship to college on athletics, so they were a good athlete in college. They came out of it. They had multiple degrees. They had a graduate degree. They were successful in their field by anyone's account. They were a successful person, and that's how this person identified themselves. I am a success, and that drove him. That drove that person to do these things and to become and to to be successful in all those things until one day they weren't a success. They didn't get the job that they were supposed to get. And that hurt. Because if you define yourself as I'm a success, the day you stop being a success blows your identity out of the water, doesn't it? And it hurts so bad that they started to self-medicate. And and because the self-medication couldn't take the sting away from that hurt, they started to self-medicate more and more and more. And as they self-medicated, they failed more and more. Can you see the downward spiral on this? Until they hit rock bottom. And, 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 And still on rock bottom saying, I'm a success. What happened? They had let that become their identity. And it wasn't until they hit rock bottom that that, that identity was completely shattered. And then he said, he, he, they told us the other day, he said, I'm really working on, on reading scriptures and on praying and getting in touch with God. It's a completely different thing now. And it, it was just he couldn't even put words to it. But what became clear is that up until that point of the fall, he'd been driven to succeed. It was how he identified. It was how he self, I'm a success. It's how he identified. And what really needed to happen is he needed to be drawn towards God. See, we live the first part of our lives being driven by everything that happens to us for good or ill. Who we are creates our identity. And we try our best to live into that for good or ill. And we're driven to be that. That's our identity. We try to confirm it all the time. That's our identity for good or ill. That's me right there. And if I'm not that, what am I? And we need to stop being driven and start being drawn into the future. We need to be drawn into what God wants for us. Because you want real freedom? You want real success? Quit being driven by what this world says you are. And what life has taught you you are. And start being driven into the future of a God that reminds you of whose you are. 
See, because failure now, <laughs> failure is just a good way to learn. It's a lot better teacher than success. A lot better teacher than success. And so if I fail now, I'm not a failure. I'm a child of God. I just didn't do that right. And I can pick myself off and the Spirit prays for me when I'm, I'm hurt so bad I can't pray for myself and calls me forward into a better future, rebukes me when I messed up. And that Spirit's there to remind me of who I belong to and who I really am. And if you don't get in touch with that Spirit, that voice will never be there. And you'll always just be spinning your wheels, wondering, what was that whole God thing about? And you will never make another follower of Christ until you get in touch with the Spirit yourself. Because God's just an idea to them until God's real to you. Real freedom is living with the Spirit's presence. Something funny happens when you start to listen, when you fully give in and you start to do that. The world starts to change around you. Your freedom, your internal sense of freedom starts to create freedom in the world around you. Paul says it this way. He says, if anyone's in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone and the new, here, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, I want you to hear that word reconciled. He says it twice here. He said, you've been reconciled, and he gave us a ministry of reconciliation. And so we're, we're circling around this idea of what is freedom. I think it's wrapped up in that word there. You know what reconciliation is? Relational peace. That's what it is. I've been reconciled. My relationship with God is at peace now. I'm not fighting God on everything now. My relationship with me is okay. I've let myself off the hook. I've forgiven myself. I'm moving forward with a new identity. I'm at peace. I'm whole. And my relationship with people around me is at peace. You want real freedom? Real freedom is peace. It's wholeness. It's fullness. It's saying, you know what? Everything's all right. When's the last time you took a good, deep breath and felt, you know, everything's all right. It's going to be all right. That's freedom. That's freedom. If you can't do that, man, work on it. Work on it. Ask God to free you on the inside. Ask God to knock every one of those walls down and make you free. And then start putting everything, everything you are and everything you have under God's power and then start living into Jesus' plan. Help them buy in by selling out and then start listening to the voice of the Spirit and you will be free. You will be free. And that freedom will spread. You know, this year at Crossman's Church, every year we kind of try to lift up a word or a phrase or something that kind of guides us. And Suzanne, Pastor Suzanne and I have been praying about this. And the one we came up with, and we're going to hit it all year, and you're going to see this all year long, is get real. This is kind of, this is on our t-shirts right at the beginning. This is the thing that, that I think God wants us to really start thinking about, is are we being real with our faith? Are we engaging in real life and real people and real faith, or are we just playing a game? I can tell you right now, if you're just coming here for entertainment, you can find a lot better entertainment on Netflix on Sunday morning, right? You're here for a reason. You're here to get your life changed. You're here to be transformed. You're here to get in touch with God and with God's people and figure out what you're supposed to be doing in this world. So let's get real with that this year. Let's do it. Let's engage in this life with everything we have and watch what God does, it, what does with it when he blows your horizons away. It starts doing things with you you never thought was possible, that everybody confirmed was not possible in you. Watch God blow it away. Jesus said, I came that they might have life, real life. Do you want that? That's my question for you today. Do you want that? I do. Can I get the people that are serving today come up, please? Today, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. And to me, really, when you think about it, this is kind of the, the example Jesus left us of how to live this free life. That he placed his entire being, his entire life under the authority of God. 
that he engaged in that plan even though it cost him his life because he knew there was more to it than that. And it wasn't about him and that he was responsive to the Spirit every time. Do you want this? Because if you come up to sharing this, that's what you're saying. I want this. Otherwise, it's just bread and juice. Why bother? Not even that good of juice, to tell you the truth. This is you embodying the need and the desire and the hunger to live free and to spread that freedom. Are you willing? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today knowing where we have failed you and we know you know where we're failing. And we want to be a new creation. We want the world to take a look at us and go, what happened to that person? They were this and they were that and they were that and now I just can't describe what's happened to them. They just seem so free. Yes, Lord. That's what we want. Help us live into this. Help us engage in it. Help us be this like Jesus was. Show us how to be free and how to spread that freedom in this world. Amen. On the night before he was crucified, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. And then he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, drink, all of you, for this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink it, remember me. The ushers are going to release you in just a moment. If you're on this side of the room, please go down the middle aisle and come around the back on this side. If you're on this side of the room, go around the back and come on this side. Everyone is welcome. You don't even have to have identified as a Christian. Are you wanting to be free? Because that's what this symbolizes. Are you wanting God to set you free? This is an act of faith. This is you jumping out there and placing yourself out there for freedom's sake. Do you want that? Come as you're released. The ushers will release you from the front to the back. Take some time up here at the altar. Spend a little time with God if you will.
give thanks. It's for freedom that we've been set free, Jesus. <laughs> That's, it's easy to say and it's hard to live into in some weird sort of way, but we're free and even we might not even believe it all the way yet, but we're free. So help us believe it. Give us the faith to follow. Faith is your gift to us, so please help us have faith. Help us believe. Help us trust and live into that freedom so that we can bring it to others. Holy Spirit, call us forward from this point forward. Don't allow anything, our past, our present, anyone around us in this world define who we are. You define who we are. You tell us whose we are. Allow us to live fully into that free life. We thank you. Thank you, Father, for this freedom. We're going to take our offering here in just a second as we, as we shut down for the day. Here's what I want you to know. If you're a guest here today, please don't feel like you have to give to what we're doing. This is for people that have considered Jesus to even have authority over our finances. And so we do that to support the mission here because this is what we exist to do. We exist to find and reach people and introduce them to this freedom. And, and you know, that's what this church is all about. And so we give to that because God has authority over our money. And so we do that. So allow us to do it. You just take your connection card that you filled out earlier and put it in the offering bucket as it comes by. And, and, but look at the back of that. On the first one, it says, I want to put my trust in Jesus Christ. You know, so many people struggle with, you know, is God real? Who, was Jesus who he said he was and all those things? Yeah, well, yeah. The question isn't really, is God real? The question is, do you trust God? Do you trust him enough with everything you are and your future and whose you are, do you trust him? That's faith. That's real faith is, is knowing that I can trust God and give everything over to him. It'll blow your boundaries and your identity way out of the water and make you so free you don't know what to do with yourself. It'll make you free enough to make a change in this world. Do you want that? Do you think you can give your trust and your assent over to God and say, you know, Jesus, I don't understand everything about this whole salvation thing, but save me. I need it. Show me how to be free. If you've never done that before and you want to today, mark that on the card. I'd love to talk to you about what that means and how that works out in your life. And if you'd like to be baptized, that's our symbol of the new creation. It's like being reborn. That's why we do it. And if you've never been baptized, we'd love to share that moment with you. We've had several here lately. They've been awesome. I wasn't here, but we got to watch them on the camera over at Madison. So it was really awesome. So fill out your card. We're going to take our offering. And before we get started, I want you to normally we sing a song in the offering or stuff like that. But this week and for the next few weeks, we're going to be showing these videos. So you don't want to miss any of these. They kind of build on each other. But this has everything to do with the young ones and helping them be free. And that's what we're really going to be pushing towards as a church over the next few weeks. So, and we'll let Michelle explain it to you afterwards. So let's take our offering and watch this video.
it is a phase, and we don't want you to miss it. These clips that you're seeing is part of something we call orange. You're going to see a lot of things orange here, and we're excited as your children's ministry is moving towards orange. What does that mean? We are getting ready to have a full children's lone worship service, which will be taking place in the storm shelter. My name is Michelle Wickham. I'm the children's director here at Crosswinds Church Harvest, and we're really excited. I also want you to point out, you may see jars of bubblegum balls in the back of the room and think, what's all that about? Those bubblegums represent how many weekends you have left with your child. If you have a nine-year-old, you have 424 weekends left before they turn 18. If you're a children's server here at Crosswinds Church, you serve 12 hours a year. They spend a really important hour with our children. We love our children here at Crosswinds, and we're ready to partner with families because we do want them to be free. So we hope that you'll celebrate with us as you see more and more of orange coming. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we love you, and we do search to be free, and we pray that everyone here can take the steps to do so, that, so you can be a disciple, especially to our children. In your son's name we pray. Amen.